Lord Jesus tells us not to worry about anything but keeping God's commandments. Listen, in the book of Matthew, he begins to teach us about worry and how we shouldn't do that, right? In chapter 6, verse 25, the Lord said, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Raiment is your clothing, meaning you shouldn't be worrying about what you're going to eat, or how you're going to clothe your body. The Lord said, if, you know, he so clothed the grass of the field, which is hewn down and cast in the fire, how much more would he clothe you in what you need, right? He tell you first, seek after the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Meaning, you know, once you serve in the Lord, everything you need will be provided for you. you you're going to be straight. Like, you know, he said, even Solomon in all his glory wasn't arrayed like one of these flowers. Meaning the clothes that you put on, you know, however dapper or uh, decadent or uh, fly you think you are, you're not clothed like a rose or a lily. Or a tulip, you're not as beautiful as that. No matter how much Gucci, Versace, whatever you put on, you're never better than than how the Lord made you. And this is from old time with the Lord telling you not to worry, because it was taught in the past in the Law of Moses that the Lord will bless everything you put your hand to. The rain will come in its due season. Your crops are produced when they need to, and you know the sun won't beat down the crops, meaning it won't be so hot and, and drought stricken. And this is written in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11. Listen to this scripture. A land which the Lord thy God cared for, the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it, from the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, and I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit. And least ye perish quickly from all the good land which the Lord giveth you. Now, I serve the Lord. So the Lord Jesus Christ said, uh, if you believe, just small grain, smaller than a mustard seed, then you can tell this mountain be thou removed. So I farm and garden, and it sound it sounds preposterous that I would not water my garden. And I sound crazy to people all the time when I tell them I don't water my garden. I'm gonna shoot a little video before the drought hit me or whatever. Be my plants are uh, flourishing. And I hadn't watered them. They're producing fruit more delicious than any fruit I ever produced when I was watering and doing all these different things, adding amendments and, 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 and uh, you know, just trying to do the normal gardening. But when I gave it to God, it's something about the way these fruits are being produced. Man, people come and they eat the raspberry and they say, I don't even like raspberries, but these raspberries are delicious. I don't even like blackberries, but I could eat your blackberries. And, you know, like I said, there used to be a burden sometimes when I watered my garden all the time because the first thing I'd have to do as soon as I get off work is run and hurry up and water the garden. If it went a day, uh, a few hours without being watered, all the plants started wilting and falling over. 
but now they hardy and strong and drought resistant. So it, it's like, I just believe what God told me. It's in the scripture that he will watch over the land and give the rain in the right time when it need be. And the land will yield her fruit. I just read it to you. So when people water their garden, my take on it now is I'm not trusting in God. And it might be foolish. Maybe, you know, it's like, well, he gave me a faucet to water the garden. Why shouldn't I water it? I think about this sometimes. But I, I trust in God that he said he'd do a thing, watch over the garden for me. So I, I, I got I to gotta believe and trust.